Hi, it's Dwyer. It is Thursday, January 28th, 2021. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, you have a very important fight style-wise, and I mean very important fight style-wise. Coming up at 168 pounds, between 168-pound IBF champion Caleb Plant and opponent and former champion Caleb Truax. Now, what do I mean by a very important fight style fight? And to me, this is akin to Alexander Usyk against Derek Chisora. If you're a fighter who moves and you have holes in your game, right? Or not quite holes, let's call it areas that concern some fans, fans like me, right? Possible vulnerabilities. Then even in fights where you're heavily favored, I believe it helps a fighter's career to fight against opponents who are gonna try to expose those vulnerabilities so that you can improve those skill areas. Now, Caleb Plant is unbeaten. He is an excellent mover. He has a great left hook. He's extremely fast. He can go from zero to 60 in the blink of an eye. In other words, one minute you see him, his hands are by his waist. He moves that well, by the way. He can move away from you to the point where he can drop his hands. But then suddenly, on a dime, his left hand is up on the side of your head, right? He can just literally turn on a switch. He's very fast-handed, but he's also herky-jerky fast. Quick twitch, right? It's not just fast combinations. He can throw that first punch in a combination so quickly that it'll catch an opponent completely unprepared. Look at the Mike Lee fight to figure out what I'm talking about. He's also creative, right? His ring presence is such, his facial expressions are such that he makes opponents look slow and predictable, right? You see him thinking as he throws a combination, right? He'll see an opening, you'll see him throw an uppercut, then you'll see him back away, throw jabs and stuff like that. In other words, this is a guy who is creative in the ring. As you watch what he does, you say, wow, that's novel. That's different. I haven't seen that before. Let's just say, nor have his opponents. He typically is far ahead on the scorecards in most of his fights. But none of us are perfect, right? All of us, at times, have issues. Caleb Plant, at times, has issues, in my opinion, with his stamina. The movement tires him out, right? He's not a guy who can move for 12 rounds and he never looks tired. He's not Tyson Fury, right? No, no, this is a guy who seems to get tired. He's moving a lot. You think to yourself, wow, he has more energy than the other guy. But then he seems to tire. The movement seems to drain him, even though he's in his 20s. I also feel that he has spacing issues, right? The big question for him is, and we're being critical here, Right? This is not a fan club site. The big question is, can he keep a relentless pursuer? Right, In effect, a 168-pound Derek Chisora outside. Right, Can he avoid being walked down as he gets tired? Now, let me just point out, by chance, he has the perfect opponent, the perfect opponent, to give us some answers. 
Caleb Truax is relentless. Relentless. He is a former champion who has fought some of the best in recent years in the division. Right? Former champion Anthony Durrell was an opponent. Danny Jacobs was an opponent. He fought a much more talented James DeGale. To me, one of the most talented I've seen. And he beat DeGale. He smothered DeGale. DeGale had some of the same questions that Caleb Plant had. And unfortunately for DeGale, he was not prepared in their first fight for the relentlessness of Caleb Truax. Right? Truax is always in your face. This is a pressure fighter. The theory is that pressure breaks pipes. Right? Truax is not on his back foot. He's on his front foot. He's coming forward. There's not a lot of downtime in a Caleb Truax fight. Quite frankly, I thought the Gale barely won the rematch. I know in the books it went down as a unanimous decision. I thought the Gale was fortunate to get that decision in the rematch. But understand why Truax is the perfect opponent. It's because he's 37 years old. Right, 37. With his fight style, you can imagine there are a lot of miles on the tire. It's because when he fought Anthony Durrell, when he fought Daniel Jacobs, I believe the Jacobs fights at 160, he got KO'd, knocked out. Right? Like Derek Chisora, the heavyweight, Caleb Truax has come up short against elite competition. So this is a guy who style-wise could give Caleb Plant problems, but who, because of the high mileage and because of the talent gap, might not be able to fully test Caleb Plant. Right? So he's the perfect opponent. If you're a manager, you're looking for an opponent like this because you want your guy to address his weak spots before he gets in the deep end of the pool. Now, what I want people to realize is this is a major fight. It's going to be televised on Fox. So this is that big fight that you actually get a chance to watch. And understand, the front foot walk you down crowd will also be watching by that i mean canelo who just walked down callum smith i'm sure will be watching this fight right this is the 168 pound weight class david benavides who's excellent in the pocket who some boxing insiders abel sanchez Golovkin's trainer, believes would give Canelo his toughest fight, right? I'm sure David Benavides is going to be watching. Recently beaten Callum Smith, who walked down Rocky Fielding, will be watching this fight closely, right? Callum wants back in. If he's watching this fight, and if it looks like Caleb Plant can't handle constant aggression, a guy collapsing the pocket, a high punch volume from a guy who's going to be trying to cut off the ring. Then Callum Smith is going to want a piece of Caleb Plant's title. Let me also say, too, at 175, one floor up, Arthur Perturbiev, another guy who likes to cut off the ring, come on his front foot do unto others, and then win the fight. He'll be watching this fight. After all, it would be a big payday. So, I'm expecting Caleb Plan 
to win this fight, to look magnificent in doing so. In part because Truax was KO'd by Darrell, was KO'd by Danny Jacobs, is 37 years old. And it's because Caleb Plant's left hook is here trigger. As I've said here online before, I suspect that he might be a lefty fighting inverted because to me, his left hand is so much better than his right hand. So that's how I see the fight. Let me hear from you. The fight's unbettable, right? To me, the fight's unbettable because you're not getting sufficient odds on Caleb Plant. And I do believe that he beats 37-year-old Caleb Truax. Right? The fight's unbettable. If I had to bet the fight, I would take a small taste on Truax simply because the odds are so mismanaged. And you know my belief. Even an outclassed opponent has at least a 10% chance of winning a fight. Right? But make no mistake, I expect the favorite to win. I would not be surprised if he does so by KO. The red flags will be out. If you see Caleb Plant looking winded, looking tired, if you notice him in protection mode, in let's say rounds nine and 10, Right? If by then he's too tired in a televised fight for his title to mount much of an offense, if you see him getting very defensive with Caleb Truax in the championship rounds, trying to coast to a victory, then that'll bode poorly for him against the David Benavideses of the world. Right, Keep that in mind as you watch this one. I think Caleb Plant wins the fight big. I do expect him to have some tough moments, to be forced on his back foot, to have to move away from Truax in the first third of this fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.